The temporomandibular joint, commonly referred to as TMJ, is a paired joint where the mandible, lower jaw, meets the temporal bone, base of the skull, just forward of the ears. Since it is a paired joint, the right and left sides must function together in harmony. This is a very complex joint. As a matter of fact, the temporomandibular joint is the most complex joint in the body. It is the only joint in the human body to have a rigid endpoint of closure. That is where the teeth make contact to limit jaw movement. It is also a compound joint, a joint involving at least three bones in the body, the mandible, the temporal bone, and the articular disc. The TMJ is not well understood and tends to be an orphan that belongs to no particular profession. Only about 24% of MDs and only about 10% of dentists have received any postdoctoral training in the diagnosis and treatment of TMJ disorders. You can imagine the strain that we place on this joint as we breathe, talk, eat, and swallow 2,000 times per day. It is no wonder that 34% of the population reports some level of disorder in the TMJ. The normal movement of this joint is both a rotation and a sliding motion. As we begin to open our mouths, the rotation aspect of movement begins, and as we continue to open the mouth, the lower jaw actually begins to slide downward and forward. The basic components of this joint consist of bone, tissue, muscle, ligaments, tendons, and a disc which acts like a small pillow or cushion protecting the joint from wear, sort of like a shock absorber. TMD, or temporomandibular joint disorder, is characterized by signs and symptoms including pain in the area of the TMJ or the surrounding muscles which often limits the mandibular range of motion. TMD is typically caused by various types of trauma. When the disc remains in its proper position during normal opening and closing of the jaw, no clicking or popping should occur. If the joint makes noise when opening and closing, it is due to friction within the joint. There are several adverse conditions that occur in TMD situations. Open lock is when the condyle and disc move too far forward and get caught over the anterior slope of the eminence of the temporal bone. This is an open lock and will cause the patient to have difficulty closing his mouth. Disc displacement with reduction is caused by trauma that has damaged or stretched the ligaments, causing the disc to be out of position too far forward in relation to the head of the condyle. As the mouth begins to open, the disc is in front of the condyle. As the condyle slides downward and forward, the condyle pops back into position on top of the disc. This causes a popping or clicking sound. When closing the mouth, the disc remains in its proper position and then just before the condyle returns to its position of origin, the condyle slips off the disc and another popping sound occurs. This second sound may be softer and not as noticeable. Disc displacement without reduction is when the posterior ligaments have been severely stretched or torn. These are the ligaments that hold the disc on the head of the condyle. If this occurs, the disc remains in front of the condyle throughout the entire opening and closing process. Most TMD patients worsen with time. Slight clicking advances to more frequent clicking and eventually to jaw locking as the posterior ligaments continue to stretch, allowing the disc to move further and further out of position. When the disc has slipped too far forward or inward, the jaw will lock shut, often referred to as a closed lock. An acute closed lock, occurring usually due to trauma, is a situation in which there is an audible noise or pop as the disc slips out of place and the person cannot open their mouth. Chronic closed lock is a problem that persists for more than six months. The disc is never positioned between the bones in the opening and closing cycle. During this time, the disc will degenerate and lose its shape. The patient may begin to open wider and wider as the disc is slowly destroyed. Pain and arthritis will set in due to bone-on-bone -bone rubbing. Depending on the severity of the problem, there are several treatment options available to treat TMD. Splint therapy consists of the placement of removable or fixed dental appliances which protect or keep in place the injured body part. The purpose of this type of therapy is to reduce the inflammation and pain. This type of therapy will not restore all of the damaged or degenerated components. Orthotic therapy is similar to splint therapy, however an orthotic is used to support, align, prevent, or correct deformities, or improve the function of movable parts of the body. The goal of orthotic therapy is to provide the best condyle-fossa relationship possible, 
to decompress the joint, which reduces inflammation, and to restore correct muscle length bilaterally. Surgery is only recommended in about 2% of TMD cases. As with all medical treatment, diagnosis is key. Your physician or dentist may refer you to a doctor, either MD or dentist, who has received extra training in the diagnosis and treatment of TMD. You will undergo testing to determine the cause and extent of dysfunction and be given treatment options. Comprehensive treatment may include referral to other professionals such as chiropractors, naturopaths, physical therapists, massage therapists, or podiatrists to provide you with whole body care to address your condition.